What to pack or not to pack? Japan is a country like no other and for that reason packing for a Japan trip might be a little bit different. What are the do's, what are the don'ts of packing for your upcoming Japan trip? The things that you must pack and things that simply are a waste of space. Hopefully you won't be making these mistakes too. So here are some of the things that I've learned. Seasons in Japan can in a way be extreme. I mean, we're talking about a country that has five seasons. Yes, there is a fifth season, Tsuyu, also known as the rainy season, which although being Japan's unofficial fifth season, is very real. And then there's the fact that even across the country itself, you need to be prepared for different weather situations, including the chance of a typhoon in the summer months. So pack accordingly. Winter in the north is cold with heavy snowfall and temperatures dropping below zero, making it a popular destination for winter sports, whilst in the south, winters are relatively mild, with temperatures rarely dropping below freezing, though certain areas may actually experience snow in higher elevations. Spring arrives later, usually in April in the north, with cherry blossoms blooming in May, whilst in the south spring arrives earlier, typically in March, with cherry blossoms blooming earlier in cities like Tokyo, Kyoto and Osaka. And in the north, summers are mild with average temperatures ranging between 20 degrees and 25 degrees Celsius, whilst in the south, summers are hot and humid, and I mean step into a sauna humid, with temperatures ranging between 25 degrees and 35 degrees or even higher. Autumn in the north arrives as early as September, whilst in the south, autumn colours start around October. And in addition to the four distinct seasons, Japan also experiences a rainy season, also known as Suyu, typically occurring in early June to mid-July, affecting most of the southern and central parts of the country, including regions like Kanto and Kansai. I would say pack lightwear clothing for summer and spring, with spring needing more layers and light jackets for cooler evenings, whilst in the winter, especially in the northern regions, bring a warm coat and warm clothing. So what are the essentials that I've learned to pack? Well, the obvious ones are my passport, including any travel documents, including pre-booked activities and any JR passes that you might be using, travel adapters and chargers because Japan uses type A and type B electrical outlets. So bring a power adapter if your devices have different plug types. Also, don't forget those chargers for your electronics. Cash and credit cards. Whilst credit cards are widely accepted in major cities, it's still advisable to carry some cash for smaller establishments, especially in rural areas. Cash is still king in Japan, I'd say. And I also take any online banking devices that I might be needing, just in case I need to log in. I like to take a small bag of emergency medications like painkillers, as I don't really need any prescription drugs. And I always carry band-aids with me too. It is, however, important to note that Japan has very strict laws regarding the medications that can be imported into the country. So please check out if your medication is okay or requires special permissions. Ah, slip on shoes. <laughs> if you can, then comfortable slip on shoes is the way to go. I remember traveling to Japan on my first trip and hating every time I had to take off my shoes at a temple or a restaurant, etc. In fact, I ended up giving up and purchasing some slip on shoes. Now I always wear either slip on shoes or sandals if it's the summer. <laughs> a day bag, I make sure that I have a smaller bag packed, especially making sure that it can hold a water bottle and a few overnight items in the event that I forward my luggage to another hotel for the following day. A power bank, you might rely more than normal on your phone for maps, translations, and basically taking a gazillion photos. So I always make sure that I have a power bank to give me a boost along the day. Spare glasses or contact lenses. <laughs> if you wear glasses, then this one is a must. For me, I always pack a set of spare glasses and contact lenses just in case I lose or something happens to my main ones. Thankfully, they don't take up too much space. And as for the less obvious items, portable Wi-Fi or a SIM card, not quite something that I pack, but rather something that I organize to collect on arrival. I actually have one from home. 
Wi-Fi in Japan, although available in hotels and cafes, etc., isn't quite as widespread as in the West. And being connected for maps and translation is probably a must. A small hand towel. This one comes in handy any season. You'd be surprised to find many spotless public bathrooms with no hand towels or hand dryers. So a handy small towel will help in this area. Or in the summer, you might be patting away your sweat. <laughs> An emergency disposable waterproof, depending on the weather forecast and the season, I often carry a small disposable waterproof poncho for any emergency situations. And yeah, it saved the day plenty of times. Deodorant. Okay, this one is kind of a biggie, especially in the summer. And from personal experience, Japanese deodorant just doesn't cut it. They just don't work on smelly foreigners, or at least they don't work on smelly me anyway. Do everyone a favor and pack the deodorant that you know works for you. Oh. Face masks. <laughs> Although Japan no longer has any specific masks wearing recommendations, you might find yourself in a situation where you might feel the need to wear one. <sighs> a coin purse. Oh my goodness gracious me japan loves handing back one yen five yen and ten yen coins and this is where a coin purse or a little bag like this one keeps everything handy in one place keeping them until you can at least get rid of them when you go to a temple or a shrine or are you all right uh, uh, an eye mask okay japan is called the land of the rising sun for a reason if you're staying in a traditional accommodation like a ryokan, you might want to include one of those eye masks that don't take any room. Because ryokans, they have paper walls and wooden shutters which will let in a lot of light early in the morning. I usually just keep one like this that was handed out at a flight. Guys, make sure that you pack some clean socks. You'll be taking off your shoes more than you might expect. And clean socks or socks that are in good conditions will certainly make you feel less uncomfortable in social situations. <laughs> Cute, right? Gifts. Depending on your itinerary and the activities that you will be doing, you might want to pack some small gifts to give to people. And I always carry some postcards from home to give to people I meet along the way, which also helps start a conversation. In fact, this one here, I'm gonna be sending off to my newest patron. And you might also want to pack some smaller items for specific moments during your stay. For example, if staying at a family-run ryokan or meeting somebody special, or if I decide to take a tour with a local guide. Japan is definitely a gift-giving country and this will really be appreciated. So what should you not pack for a trip to Japan? Japanese hotels have amazing body soap and shampoo. So don't waste space packing your own unless you have specific needs. In fact, I am so obsessed with Japanese body lotion and soap that I bring back some with me every time. I swear, this stuff is magic. Continuing with toiletries, there is no need to take a toothbrush either. If you want to save on space, then you must be aware that most hotels provide daily disposable toothbrushes and toothpaste. <laughs> Umbrellas. I've never seen a country that loves umbrellas as much as the Japanese. In the UK, when it rains, people typically don't use their umbrellas, even if they have one with them, from my observations anyway. Japan is a different story. Most hotels will have guest umbrellas to lend you, and even Konbini and many stores will sell really cheap umbrellas for around 500 yen or even less. Another item I bring back with me, making cheap gifts, and memories of Japan every time it rains and open one up at home. <laughs> Don't pack pyjamas or nightgowns. Most hotels will actually provide these. And as for a swimsuit, this one really depends on where you're gonna be staying. But most hotels don't really have pools, but some of the more high-end ones might. And if you're going to be doing onsen, then a swimsuit will be of no use as you will be expected to go nude. <laughs> 
Overall, Japan has a well-developed infrastructure, making it very easy to find anything that you may have forgotten or need during your trip, so don't panic. You'll be surprised what you can actually find in simple combinis, from charging cable to t-shirts and socks. Just be aware that when you do travel out of the bigger cities, it might become slightly harder to find specific items. I've also learned the hard way that if you're traveling to multiple destinations on your own trip, then you will likely be carrying your own suitcase. Some stations don't have escalators or elevators, and you'll be expected to carry your own suitcases or bags up and down sets of stairs. Therefore, it's important to also consider this and try to make your luggage as light as possible. Make sure you know your airline's baggage allowance. Don't be caught out at the airport and pack around this too. And as for a suitcase or a rack sack, this is a personal choice. I personally like carrying a suitcase rather than a backpack. I like to check everything in quickly and be on my way, but this will mean having to plan to have special reserve seats on the Shinkansen bullet trains. So I can also see the appeal of traveling with a rucksack, especially when walking through stations and simply putting it on your overhead luggage area in the train. Ultimately, there's no perfect way to pack. You could say that I'm always refining and learning every single trip. So what tip would you give that you think that I've left out? Let me know in the comment section and use a luggage emoji to prove you've watched all the way to the end. And as for those who want to know a little bit more about me, I'm Nathan Ninja Monkey. You could say I'm a bit of a Japan travel otaku. I make videos about traveling to Japan and bring you along with me. And nothing brings me more joy than seeing you hopefully going on your own perfect trip to Japan using some of my tips and recommendations. I'll actually be heading to Japan for a six week epic adventure, creating content and live streaming so that you can see what I get up to. So why not join Team Ninja Monkey and subscribe? It's only a click away and it's free. Anyway, I hope this has been an informative video that might have brought you some insights for your future trip to Japan. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Arigatou gozaimasu. Gracias. Thanks. Bye.